We're in the middle of uh, chapter nine, 9 of Matthew, and there's more healings that are happening here. It's a, an amazing book. If you look through it, just record sometime just all the healings that took place in these chapters, and you'll be amazed how much healing is actually a, a, a very focused part of the book of Matthew in the beginning here. And uh, verse 18, it says, While he was uh, saying these things, he was talking about the new wine and new wine skins, there came a synagogue official and bowed down before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Wow. Wow. His reputation's really gone out so much so that it, it, he's really saying, he said, uh, uh, I believe that you can raise her from the dead. This is amazing, uh, the faith that's beginning to rise in the people around. So, And... Uh, so in the middle of this, uh, he's going to, going to touch her. He runs into a woman that's been hemorrhaging for a long time. And uh, she, was, she said, if only I can touch his garment, I shall get well. And, uh, you know, the great faith that so many people was rising because they'd been seeing what Jesus was doing. And uh, so he's on his way. Uh, and then when you get to the verse so he's interrupted with this lady. He heals her on the way to this official's house. Verse 23, And when Jesus came into the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd in a noisy, in noisy disorder, because a girl had died, so they had the mourners there and that kind of thing, he began to say, Depart, for the girl has not died, but is asleep. When he said that, it says they began laughing at him. They knew that she wasn't sleeping, sleeping, but they didn't know when he was saying sleep. It was just saying, She may be dead, but it's temporary. He's going to wake up here. And uh, when the crowd was put out, he entered and took her by the hand. The girl arose. And he says, and this news went out into all that land. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I can't imagine it not going out into all the land. And then uh, and the blind man, uh, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, have mercy on us, son of David. You know, their declaration, son of David, what is that saying? These guys are making a declaration that the crowds weren't even for sure making yet. He's, they're saying, you're the Messiah. Have mercy on us, Messiah, son of David, the promised one that would sit on David's throne. So these blind men had great faith. And so uh, Jesus said uh, in verse 28, last half, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said, yeah. So he's asking them, them if they think he can do it. Uh, They'd already said, uh, you know, have mercy on us. They were crying out for his mercy. And uh, they, they can do it. The other guy asked, are you, do you want to do it? So in verse 29, it says, he touched their eyes saying, be it done according to your faith. So they believed he could do it. They were crying out for him to do it. And he touched him and he said, let it be done to you according to your faith. So just once again, all these miracles happen. And we kind of get a summary in verse 35. Jesus was going about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And seeing the multitudes, he, had, he felt compassion for them because they were dis distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. And so here it just says everywhere he was going, everywhere he was going, he was teaching, proclaiming the gospel and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And then he makes a, a decree, and this is a transition here in the book of Matthew. Now we're going to see a transitional part of going from Jesus' ministry and what he's doing. Then he makes a request here in verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. So he's saying pray that the Lord would send workers in the harvest. And then in verse, uh, chapter 10, the first verse is, And having summoned his twelve disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. So he says, pray the Lord to send workers in the harvest. And then the next verse, he's sending workers into the harvest. He's commissioning his disciples to go out. So we get a, a, a new uh, a change in, in the emphasis here in the book of Matthew for a little while at least. It's going from Jesus' ministry to now the disciples begin to do what they've been watching. And they're actually commissioned to do what they've been watching. They've given, they're now giving a, a authority um, exousia there's two words for authority exousia and dunamis exousia is is like you've been given the badge of authority you you're some you're uh, deputized uh, to do the work 
Uh, dunamis is more like the power, um, the actual power. Like I would, I would equate this exousia would be like a, a policeman's badge. He has the authority to arrest you, and dunamis would be his gun. If you don't obey, he'll shoot you. You can obey the badge or you can obey the gun. At this point, they're given authority, and they're going to be given dunamis power to do all of these things, to, to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And it names who the guys were, and they go out, and they begin to do the ministry. And it says here, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts or a bag for your journey, etc. Then he says, and it, verse 11, Into whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it, and abide there until you go away. And as you enter the house, give it your greeting. You know, and it's amazing. I know people that do this still today. They go into a country. They don't have contacts. They don't have uh, provision. <laughs> These guys are, are radical. They say, we're just going to do, Ma- do Matthew 10. We're just going to go in an area and we preach. And then they look for a house, and sometimes it's in a Muslim country. Okay? They're preaching a Christian message. They go to a Muslim country. And they're going to look for a place where the peace rests on the house so they can go and stay there. And that can be their headquarters. And they actually do this. And you know what happens? God meets them there. And, and, and they, they come back with incredible stories of we got there, you know, we found these people. They said they would house us. We, we, that was our home base. And we went out and preached every day out of that community. Uh, so he goes on and says, as you enter the house, give it your greeting. Uh, verse 13, and if you're, the house is worthy, let your greeting of peace come upon it. And if it is not worthy, let your greeting of peace return to you. And whoever does not receive you nor heed your words as you go out of that house or that city, shake off the dust of your feet. You know, so, but, but it's amazing to me. I know people that, they go and do this. I mean, they, they actually, so we're going to do what the Bible says. Can you imagine? Uh, that's what I think God's looking for, people that will do his word. Well, we want to do some parts of it, but this is radical. I mean, this is like, come on. That's like trust in God <laughs> for, for everything. So he goes on to explain some things here. In, verse, in chapter 16, of, or verse 16 of chapter 10, he says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Well, thank you. That's, that sounds good. Therefore, be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the courts and scourge you in their synagogue. So he goes through the... Uh, he goes through this uh, description of their commission and what it's going to be like. You know what he says? He says, you know what? This commission is not going to be easy. It's not, it's not just, a, uh, you know, I'm not going to say, you'll float from city to city. Everyone will love you. You'll be up in the clouds and they'll just bow down and say, oh, please speak to us. We love to hear your words. He's saying, no, no. I'm going to send you up like sheep among wolves. <sighs> You know, they're baring their teeth at you. And for you to maintain your faith in the midst of that, you've got to be confident in the one that you serve. You have to understand he is the truth. He is the son of David. He is the one. And, you know, and he even goes on and, and says that, you know, that you're going to be hated by all on account of my name. That, you know, that's, that's not really not what people want to sign up for. This is not like a... a seeker-friendly message right here that this is going to grow your church. This is kind of one of like, I think I'll, it's nice visiting here, but I think I'll go on, Jesus, that was quite a message. Yeah, you're quite the guy, but I think I'm going to look for something a little easier than this. Uh, and then it, he ends that whole section. Uh, it says but in verse 23, but whenever they are, persecute you in this city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you shall not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. There's a message about his return. But he says that you're going to get persecuted in city to city. He said, just keep going to the next. Go to the next. Uh, and then he goes on in the next passages and just explains uh, that you're not going to be above your master. What they've done to the master, they're going to do to you. He didn't have it good. He got persecuted. He ended up actually on a cross, killed. And so he's just, he's just preparing them. This isn't going to be easy but it's worth it. 